I'm an indie filmmaker from Columbus, Ohio. I made a documentary about a cyber stalker. And this story is just getting really weird. Even though I was granted a civil stalking protection order and he was found in contempt of court, he's still getting scarier. These are just vlogs to document what he's doing online and how social media companies are doing nothing to curb his behavior. I'm suing multiple parties in federal court for one reason. Because even when I lost my home, I lost my cars, I lost my money, I lost my business partner, they did not stop. It's time to step up and file a lawsuit and stop all of this immediately. And I'm going to begin pursuing this federal lawsuit and I am not going to drop this suit until I get justice and I'm left alone. I do often say that Matthew Burdick will never sue because that is factually accurate. He has never sued anyone. She'll start saying, he'll never sue, not gonna happen. He'll never sue, not gonna happen. He'll never sue you. No, 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 he'll never sue. He'll never sue, see? He, he'll never sue. Said he'll never sue, he'll never sue, he'll never sue, he'll never sue, he'll never sue. He has threatened to sue all of these companies and people, and he has sued none of them. A very, very big part of the Nowhere Man scam is convincing people that I won't sue. He's challenged me to sue all these people, right? Like, I'm a fraud if I don't sue, and, but none of it, none of it suggests that I won't file a lawsuit now that I'm able to file those lawsuits. So it's entirely accurate to say he will never sue anybody because he's not going to ever sue anybody. I have filed a defamation lawsuit for the many lies he has said about me. He evaded service. He refused to be served and the case was dropped. Whether or not I file another one. John Doe suits are being filed to obtain uh, the identity of the person running that site. And so I have to sue him to get it back. And so this is lawsuit week. Matthew in many occasions has actually said he already filed the lawsuits. Past tense, I filed it. it. It was already filed. He will send emails saying, the lawsuit is already filed. He'll make videos saying, I filed the lawsuit or I filed for a restraining order. None of which is true. He lies about that. He lies all the time about that. I've been on the phone with attorneys all day. What I'm doing is I'm working on a lawsuit against Facebook for allowing a vigilante group to operate on its networks for many years. I'm at the point where I'm gonna file a discrimination lawsuit against Substack. And in order for them to even consider whether or not they gave me an advance or did business with me, they would have to speak with me first, which they've refused to do, which I believe is based entirely on discriminatory reasons. It's just ridiculous. It's almost like a child threatening lawsuits all the time. I'm gonna sue you for this. I'm gonna sue you for a hundred million dollars without even the slightest concept as to how damages work in the actual legal system. I mean, again, I'm gonna sue you for a hundred million dollars is something a child says. I will never forget 29 years ago in 1994 when I was a musician I had a master disc of my first CD of 22 songs that I had worked on and I wanted to get them mass produced. So I went to this guy who said, I want to get them replicated, which is like really pressed. But they usually say you have to do a thousand. He goes, I can get 300 for a buck each. I'm like, perfect, let's do it. He held onto my master disc for three months and then finally said, yeah, I, it's going to cost a thousand bucks. They can only do a thousand. I'm like, we had this conversation. I'm gonna miss my opportunity. I'm leaving school soon. I won't be able to sell by the end of the year. I have all the record stores in the college town ready to take the CD. I can't do that. I need to only get 300. He's like, well, you're screwed. I'm like, give me my disc back. He's like, you need to give me a thousand bucks. 
I've already placed the order. I'm like, I didn't approve that. So I was just sitting and he kept my messages and just started ignoring me. So I went to an attorney locally here in Columbus. He agreed to meet with me for free for one hour. I meet with them and I'm like, I want to sue this guy. He's like, for what? I'm like, we kept my disc and he's caused me damages. I want to sue him for like $30,000, $40,000. He's like, $30,000, $40,000? Can you prove it? I go, what do you mean? He goes, like, you have receipts from sales that you couldn't deliver because of him. Do you have contracts with the record store saying they were going to sell X number of discs? It's like, no. He goes, then you, my friend, do not have any damages. I go, well, what about all the, you know, emotional distress that I've been under and all the panic I've had about this? He goes, have you been seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist that can confirm that? I'm like, no. He goes, then you don't have damages there either. It was just one of the most eye-opening reality checks I'd ever had. I mean, at the time I was early 20s. So this was my first real life lesson about real law versus TV and movie law. And it had this profound effect on my point of view the rest of my life. And the guy was so nice. He said, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna write the guy a letter with my letterhead as a lawyer, and then you're gonna get your master disc back. And that's all that's gonna happen here. He said, yeah, I, the guy stopped responding to me. He goes, he's gonna to respond to this letter. So he sent a letter. Four days later, I get a panicked phone call from that guy going, can you come pick up your master disc today? Can you come pick up your master disc today? I wanna to get this back to you right now. So he was right, and I got the disc back, Honestly, I did later get replication and it never sold for squat because I'm not a very good musician. I have not talked to him since 1994 when I met with him in person. I sent him a written message on Facebook with this exact story thanking him for teaching me about how real world legal stuff works and how grateful I was for that you know, teachable moment. Just because he never filed a lawsuit in the past means that he will not file a lawsuit in the future. To understand why I never sued Peter John Ross is to go way back in the history. My career took off. I was traveling all over the country. I was making all this money. I, I, I was busy. I couldn't stop and sue him. I'm eligible for all kinds of assistance with, with suing him. Um, a way has been found to very easily sue him that's not going to be cost prohibitive and it's not going to be time consuming. And so now that I actually have the ability to sue him, which I basically didn't have before, I'm going to sue him. It comes back to Mr. Burdick saying these ridiculous things about suing people when he has no conception of what that actually means and it really loses any weight when he never actually follows through. And it, it's the same question every time is, does he honestly believe he's gonna sue somebody? Is he just threatening people to try to get them to back down? Like, is he hoping they're stupid enough to believe he's not that he's actually gonna sue, so then they'll just scurry away? I don't know. I don't know if he believes it or not. I can't tell. He says things with such confidence, you would just assume he believes it, but he's been so manipulative it could just be an act. I have no way of knowing, and I'm certainly not qualified to diagnose it either way.